Hey guys, here's Johnny back with my first video since 2016. Been a while, I've, uh, I've been busy and I'm just giving you an update on where we are right now. Um, as you can see from the title of this video, this is more about my life. I know this has been a gaming channel historically, but we're going to be talking about gaming but not in the same way as we were before. Uh, before I get into that, uh, who am I and why should you give a shit about me? I should probably answer that. And the short answer is no, there's not really any reason why you should give a shit about me, but you're watching this video, so uh, anyway, I'm just some neckbeard that played too much proxy since you League of Legends uh, a few years ago. Don't play that game anymore, so please don't ask for any more content based on that. Um, I had a long-term gaming addiction. It started with console when I was back in the 90s, and then I moved on to the PC in the late 90s and early 2000s, and then I got into World of Warcraft, and then I moved to Bulgaria, and I got into League of Legends, and then I moved to Thailand, and I was still playing League of Legends, and blah, 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 blah. but uh, I'm not anymore. Um, at the time, in my late teens, in my 20s, I was bouncing from job to job, I was getting fired, or I was quitting and finding new jobs. I would really hold down a job for more than a year. In total, I can count being fired for more than 20 jobs. Uh, I'm not going to go through that now. I know that's an amusing number of jobs to be fired from, but I think if you want me to, I can go into detail in that in another video, because some of the... Some of the uh, little stories about me getting fired from jobs are quite funny, but some of them are quite sad, so I think I, I mean, I think that deserves another video, but if people are interested in that, but anyway, most of my jobs were working in offices, most of my work, most of my career I've been a digital marketer, I've always hated working for other people, and especially hated working in offices, too much forced interaction and politeness, I'm not really a people person, I can, you know, I try to be friendly, um, I try to be polite, I, you know, I can hold a conversation with strangers for the most part. I couldn't back then, but I can now. Social skills have come a long way since then. But anyway, like, the thing is, I just don't really want to talk to most people. <laughs> so, I, uh, I, I never really did well in an office environment. And also, I did suffer from anxiety for various reasons, uh, mostly from... My fear of being fired, which was justified because I got fired a hell of a lot of times, and the anxiety I got from uh, forced interaction with strangers as well, and judgment from colleagues. And, you know, when you've got a job, you have to be somebody else, and you have to wear a mask, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, let's, you know, rewind 10 years. 10 years ago, so 2023, not 2020, 2013, I was working a low paid job in a shitty little office in a shithole called Slough. Uh, if you're from England, you'll know it because it's a meme town because it's such a shithole. There's a poem about dropping bombs on it. Um, I was living in my parents' house, I had no friends or money. Could barely string a sentence together. My social skills were so terrible. All I did was play video games. I was very pale. I was very skinny. Nobody really liked me or respected me. They had no reason to. Why would they? All I did was play video games all the time. I was a total loser. Now, ten years later, I mean, I'm still a loser, but at least I'm a happy loser because I've got friends. I'm living off my business. I'm just everything's great. Everything's fantastic. I just moved into an 80 square meter, two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Got a swimming pool, a gym, a sauna, a steam room. It's got a mall downstairs. There's loads of bars. There's a weed shop. It's great. Uh, in Bangkok, by the way. I'm living in Bangkok now. I've lived in Thailand for eight years, by the way. Um, more about that in another video. This is not a video about Thailand. This is more about my how I got out of this hole that I was in for years. Uh, 
anyway, going back, I always knew that there was something wrong with me. I could never quite put my finger on what that was. But now, in retrospect, I realised that I had ADD, uh, which stands for Attention Deficit Disorder. And that is not the same as ADHD, which stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Uh, and the distinction between the two is that ADD is more like, the, in a classroom, it's more like the daydreaming kid that is staring out the window. That was definitely me when I was at school. I didn't really engage much with the subject matter. I did the bare minimum, but I wasn't naughty. ADHD is the kind of naughty hyper kid who's like chucking paper airplanes around and getting into fights and stuff. That wasn't me. I wasn't doing that. I was like the, the kid that was doing nothing really, doing the absolute bare minimum, because all I wanted to do was play video games, I was, at the time I wanted to play Final Fantasy 7 on my PS1, or Baldur's Gate on my PC, or uh, Link's Awakening on my Game Boy, I, I just, you know, I would just take the fast, I would take all the shortcuts to do the homework, so I could spend more time playing video games, I didn't really study, my grades were mediocre, that was my time at school, I'm sure I'm not the only one, so, you know, nothing special. About that really. Um, then I began, when I realised that I had ADD, I began to research, the, I began to realise the relationship between ADD and ADHD. ADD or ADHD, sorry, and gaming addiction. So if you have, if you're a gaming addict, maybe you have ADD or ADHD. Because they, because they make you uh, more susceptible to being in a state called hyperfocus, where because you have difficulty with uh, focusing on mundane activities like schoolwork or work in an office or whatever, or boring small talk conversations with people you're not very interested in, um, you're more likely to get into a state of hyperfocus when you're doing a attention intensive task like playing a video game and as a result you get this can be one of your only sources of dopamine because if you have ADD or ADHD you may struggle to get dopamine from uh, mundane daily activities by the way dopamine is the chemical that makes you feel good so uh, yeah I'm not I'm struggling to explain this because I'm not a uh, scientist or anything, I don't have any background in this subject matter, so please bear with me, but I did find out from doing a bit of armchair research that ADD slows down the development of the frontal lobe, which is part of the brain that is responsible for, I got this from Google, the frontal lobes are important for voluntary movement, okay, so not spazzing out, I guess, voluntary movement as opposed to involuntary expressive language and for managing higher level executive functions. I don't know what that means, but I think that's something important. Um, so basically, if you've got ADD or ADHD, you have a, you have a child's brain in more simple, simple terms until the age of 35. Uh, and normally the frontal lobe for most people that don't have ADD or ADHD, that matures properly at the age of 25. So if you have ADD or ADHD, your brain doesn't really, you don't really have an adult brain. You're not really an adult until the age of 35. Guess how old I am? <laughs> I was born in August 1987, and now it's June 2023. I'm 35 years old. Is that a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? Let's let's carry on. So anyway, I feel like I've come out of this long dark tunnel and now I'm experiencing daylight for the first time right now. Um, my life has never been better and I look back and I question and I ponder why it couldn't have been like this the whole time and now I know that I've got I had ADD at the time, and uh, it would have been 
very difficult to impossible for me to be able to do the tasks that I do now back 10 years ago. Um, but this transformation, it didn't happen all of a sudden. I didn't suddenly wake up on my 35th birthday and snap out of it. It was a slow, uh, a slow escalation, a slow e evolution of changes. Um, and I think it's the first of these significant changes happened when I actually hit the age of 30, 2017, because I quit playing League of Legends, which was the game that I was most addicted to. Uh, I remember, sorry if you don't play LOL, you won't understand this, but please bear with me. I remember when the, it was the Urgot rework came out, and so I started playing exclusively Urgot, and I started maining him, and then I, my win rate drops, and I started, like, I couldn't, I fell out of Challenger, and I got, well, I was like, I couldn't, I can't remember what happened, but I was like, playing on a Smurf account, I couldn't get out of Platinum, and I think I just got really frustrated with the game, and I just thought, I got, I got annoyed, and I just thought, why am I playing this game, when I put so much time and effort into it, and not, get nothing out of it, I was getting angry, the game was just making me angry, and I thought, what's the point of playing a game that makes you angry? It's a game, it's supposed to be a leisure activity. So I just drifted away from LOL, uh, and start, I started playing a game on Steam called Factorio, I loved it, it was a totally different experience, and then after that I just didn't go back to LOL, and I didn't plan on quitting LOL, it just, it just happened. I just got bored of it, it just happened. Uh, and around that time, um, a friend of mine opened a bar, not too far away from where I live in Van Park, and so I started going to his bar a lot, and I was having a lot of fun in his bar, meeting a lot of new people, uh, practicing my social skills, and then I, my gaming time just dropped. It's gaming less and less and less, because I was just enjoying going out and having a life more, and uh, fast forward a couple of years, I was, I hadn't quit gaming, but I was just gaming a lot less, and quit LOL, I think I, I think I played LOL twice since I quit, and I didn't really enjoy it either time, so uh, I'm completely cured of that addiction. Uh, in 2019, I wanted to expand a bit further socially. By that time, my friend had closed his bar. So my only source of meeting new people had also vanished, and I was getting a bit, I was getting cabin fever a bit. Uh, I was hanging around with the same people over and over again, and I really wanted to uh, meet new people. I think it was when it was my birthday I, in 2018, I noticed that the same people came to my party that were there at the last one and nobody knew, there was no one new. Uh, and I think that was a bit of a wake up call, I thought I need to meet some new people. So, in 2019, I, I uh, started a meetup group, meet, I don't know if you know meetup.com, but it's great. If you're living in a city, you've probably got meetups where you can go and chill with people, meet new people, I really recommend it. I started my new, my own one called Billy No Mates. If you don't know what that means, it's a British, uh, it's British slang. It's kind of cheeky. It's like it means like a loner. It's, you know, that's what I felt like at the time. I felt like Billy No Mates. This is lemonade, by the way. So I'm sober, I'm not drinking like I used to on my stream. Uh, so the meetup, it was just a bunch of people, anybody who was in Bangkok would come and it was just you know, hanging around in a bar and just getting to know people and it took off pretty fast and it became the biggest biggest free meetup in Bangkok, I was very proud of it, I had more than 3,000 members, it was taking off, I was becoming more socially successful, I was making a bit of a name for myself, it was very good for my self esteem, but you know, for what it was one of the rare moments in my life where I actually felt valued and I felt like I'd done something special. Uh, for the record, I don't run that meetup anymore. I passed it on to a couple of American friends of mine, but uh, I'm not going to go into why that is now, but uh, that could be another video for people interested in that. So that was a turning point 
starting that meetup, um, I met a lot of people. I met people from Afghanistan. When are you ever going to meet people from Afghanistan? Like, it, it was crazy. The opportunities, meeting people from all different cultures, all different walks of life. My social skills just got so much better. That was one of the reasons why I started that meetup, was to just grind my social skills, like a skill in WoW or something. Just grind, 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 which is what I did. It's the only way is to improve your social skills is to grind them. Uh, different video. So I went from having shit zero social skills, couldn't hold a conversation for more than about five seconds with, with anybody, unless it was about video games to having the ability to talk to pretty much anybody and hold a conversation for you know, a good few minutes, for maybe a few, good few hours, depending on how well we get on or got on or uh, how, much, how much in common we have. So uh, if your social skills suck, start a meetup or go to meetups. Um, that was a turning point. Now the second milestone, the second turning point for making my life not be so shit was in 2019. Um, I had a really shit job back then. I'm not going to go into detail about that now, but the job was so shit that I started a blog while I was at work in the office. This is still Bangkok, by the way. I started my first blog. And now that blog is my main source of income. So I was motivated by how shit my life was, and I took action to make a difference. So 2019 was a very important year for me. That's, that was the year I did the meetup and the year I did the blog. So that fixed two problems in my life, which was socializing and money. So huge improvements all around. The next year, uh, 2020, uh, yeah, COVID, okay, we all know about that. Um, I had, I got another job after the shit one I was in where I started a blog, slightly better job, I got fired from that. And at that point, I thought when I got fired, I thought to myself, well, you know, what can I do? Should I get another job or... Uh, at this point, I think I said it earlier, I've been fired from over 20 jobs. That, that's another, that's a whole can of worms that I'm not going to open right now. When they fired me, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to try and go solo, go freelance and, you know, figure out how to make money without a job, because clearly jobs don't work out for me. I'm, just, I'm a terrible employee, it's the reason why, because I just don't like being told what do and I don't like being forced to interact with people that I don't like or I'm not interested in interacting with because <laughs> I'm a dick. Well, I'm kind of a dick. Kind of an arsehole, really. But anyway, yeah. I'm not really a people person. So, um, yeah, I got fired. Living in a foreign country. Fired. No job. My bank account. I had a bit of say. I had enough money to to live off of for a one year at the time. But I had a bit of savings, and I just thought, "Fuck it, I've got some. I've got some uh, marketable skills. I'm going to go solo." So I did, and um, I started off with web design. I had a little web design business going on, and I got loads of clients, and I hated it because they were micromanaging and uh, weren't paying on time, all that kind of bullshit, or being really picky, just annoying. Web design is a, is a tough one to get into, um, because the clients are just annoying. I, I, I'm not going to go on about that right now, because I think that's like another video's worth of content. It's going to get too technical, and a lot of people are not really interested in web design that much, or watching this video, so let's... Let's skip that. I found web design was a pain in the ass. Um, but I discovered this, I was introduced to this new technology called GPT-3. 
This was in 2020. Uh, you've all heard of ChatGPT, but a lot of you don't know about the predecessor, ChatGPT, which was GPT-3. Uh, ChatGPT currently runs on GPT-3.5 in the free version and GPT-4 for the plus version, but anyway, GPT-3 was like the, the earlier version of it. I was using that to write people's university papers. Yeah, I know that's kind of like a shitty thing to do, but I was making good money. All, like, all of my customers were Arab, Saudi Arabian students in Canadian universities. I was writing their college papers about like all these like woke topics about like the treatment of the indigenous Canadians by the uh, uh, European settlers, all that sort of stuff. And they were they were loving it, and they were just coming back and. More and more and more and more and throwing money at me, and I was just writing it with GPT-3. Can't really do that anymore now because the cat's out the bag. Everybody's heard of ChatGPT, but at the time, nobody knew knew that this technology. Well, I don't say nobody, but these students definitely never suspected that I was using an AI to write it. So I was making good money for doing very little work. So I was having a good time back then. Um, that's what I was doing for most of it. And then I, uh, then I discovered that the blog, do you remember I was talking about that blog that I started with that shitty job back in 2019? I started making money with that blog and then I dropped the, uh, I stopped doing the uh, selling college papers. I got in trouble with Fiverr, I got a warning for that so I had to stop that. But then I started writing blog posts instead, that was the other thing I did. But anyway, uh, for other people with GPT-3. Um, but anyway, I started working on my own blog and I started, and I realized that I was making a lot more money working on my own blog than I was uh, for other people. And um, my, my money just blew up. This was about a year ago. My money just skyrocketed on my blog. I've never, I've never had so much money before. I've never seen such numbers in my bank account. By the way, I'm not rich. I'm not, I'm not bragging, but I've always been a bit of a, I've always been someone who was a bit uh, doing okay, not broke, just doing okay. But now, when I had a job, my money was like here. Then I quit my job. My money went down. Well, I got fired in 2020. My money went down like that, and then. Started working on Fiverr, went up a bit, and then I started. Then I started monetizing my blog properly. I went boom like that, and now I've like moved into this uh, awesome apartment in the middle of Bangkok, two bedrooms, two bath, and all that stuff. Everything's great. I don't work very much. I go. I have time for walks in the park, I'm drinking less. Still meeting a lot of new people. I'm having a great time, loving life in general. Um, I'm still playing games. <laughs> I just subscribed to WoW. <laughs> I subscribed to WoW. Uh, today is Monday, and I subscribed to WoW on Friday, and I spent the whole weekend playing Wrath of Lich King Classic. Okay, guys, I've relapsed. But um, actually, that, that would have been like my gaming time anyway, so yeah, it's, it's like whatever. I haven't played any games so far. It's like nearly 10pm on Monday and I haven't played any games today. I've just been out walking around the park, working, doing food shopping. I've been productive, guys, and it feels really, really good. So I haven't quit gaming, I, I'm still gaming, but nowhere near as much as I was before. Now now I've learned what the purpose of gaming is, it's the reward that comes after the work. It's not the, it's the icing on the cake. The cake is like, you know, going to the gym and working, doing productive stuff, and gaming is what you do to let off steam afterwards. I had it all wrong before. <laughs> I made gaming the priority, which is definitely the wrong thing. Um, so anyway, just to summarize, uh, I don't know if it's something I did or if my frontal lobe, if that part of my brain just caught up with everybody else's at the age of 35 when everybody else 
is uh, was already 10 years ahead of me mentally because their frontal lobe matured at the age of 25, which is the normal age for mature rats who don't have ADHD or ADD. Uh, I stopped being a man child, I started being a responsible, productive adult, and um, everything just got a lot better, guys. So, let me know if you like this kind of content because I have a lot more I can talk about. And not just about myself, by the way, but just, you know, observations and lessons that I've learned in life, you know, going from being a total loser that nobody liked or respected to being, like, someone who is happy. I'm off. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye.